Hello and welcome back to Unforgettable Birth Stories. I'm so glad you're here today. Today I'm going to be talking about my own birth story, baby number three, and I'm just really excited to share with you guys. So grab your laundry, grab your drink, and let's go. Okay, so let's backtrack from all of that. Um, I had weeks of prodromal labor, and if you don't know what prodromal labor is, people call it false labor, but it's definitely not false labor. Um, your body is still trying to kickstart labor, and it feels exactly like labor. Like, this wasn't new to me. I had gone through two other um, labors and deliveries, and it literally felt like the real deal. I called my midwife, called my photographer, everyone multiple times, freaking out, um, but it always fizzled out. So, flash, flash forward to August 11th, um, I had went in with some inconsistent contractions and my midwife was just like, you know what, come on in, um, let's see what's going on. And um, we did the stress test and um, there was a little scare. Um, my son wasn't really showing any accelerations or decelerations in his heart rate and so that showed that he was trying to preserve his energy which means that I could have had an infection or um, something so my midwife was like you know what I'm gonna send you to the hospital to get an ultrasound and just to try to figure out if you do have an infection because obviously we don't want that infection to um, get worse um, because that can lead to other things so um, I mentally prepared myself in that moment that like if I get to the hospital and there's something wrong I'm not going to be able to have my birth center birth I'm going to have to be induced in the hospital setting and I've never had a hospital birth before so like that was a lot for me to take in um me and my husband cried outside um like once we found that out like cried and I was able to just kind of process those emotions go get food we went to chick-fil-a um because um baby's heart rate kept increasing um there was just no accelerating things uh, and a few dips and so we're gonna go to be observed and might have to be induced so i'm praying that we don't have to be because yeah, i really would like another water birth and I drink a lot. I drink a lot of like Powerade and um, some tea. So I think that I was dehydrated, but I didn't know it at the time. So we go to the hospital, I'm in triage, and they hook me up to the monitor and um, thank the Lord. And before that, going into the hospital, I had told um, all of my friends, like, please pray for me. Um, we're going to the hospital, like there could be something wrong with him and um, there could be something wrong with me. So just please keep us in our prayers. Please, please pray that I'm just dehydrated and that's it. So we go in and uh, we're there for a while. Um, and she comes in, she's like, everything's fine. Baby looks healthy. I think you were just dehydrated. She's like, we've had four other people um, come in, other moms come in with the exact same case as you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, thank God. Uh, I was so thankful that um, I didn't have to be induced, which there's nothing wrong with that when it's needed. But I was just so stuck on having my birth center birth um, because that's what I did with my other two boys. So the next day, I told everyone, this was August 11th, August 12th now, I told everyone, I said, I am not having this baby today. I refuse. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just, lots of times natural births is a mindset. And so I just really kind of tricked my mind um, into thinking that he's not coming today. I'm like, me and my husband are going to have a nice date. We're going to just have fun with the boys and just enjoy our time as a family of four before it becomes a family of five. So that worked. And um, the evening came and I started feeling more contractions. Every time I was in the car, I don't know if it was the position I was in or what, but I felt contractions the most and my contractions picked up and they intensified um, when I was in the car. So 
things were happening like I was so uncomfortable and I was like okay this might be it but I didn't want to think it I just kept saying no like I'm not gonna have this baby tonight um my midwife sent me home with a birthing stool which are they are amazing so if you can get your hands on one definitely try to do that um so the night progressed like I was sitting on the birthing stool the whole time and feeling contractions we watched a movie my sweet husband um gave me a pedicure and just pampered me and it was so great and um he's like okay I'm gonna go to bed and I was like okay you know I'm gonna paint my nails my fingernails and um the contractions were still consistent I didn't want to let anyone know just because I'm like this is not real um so they they picked up so it was like midnight and I texted my midwife and I was like you know I I'm starting to feel contractions are getting a little consistent and a little more intense so I just wanted to let you know I'm gonna try to lay down and, and go to sleep so I lay down not even two hours later I'm woken up by the intensity of these contractions so I'm like all right yay this is game time like I haven't felt contractions like this before they haven't been this intense so this is actual true labor my body's doing it Praise the Lord. So I call my babysitter. I call my photographer. I call my midwife. And nobody answered. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm going to deliver this baby on my own. No one's going to be there to document it. No one's going to be there to watch the other two boys. And I kind of panicked a little bit. But I'm like, this is what I get for telling everyone that I wasn't going to have him tonight. Because now everyone kind of just, you know, took a step back and was like, She's not going to have a baby tonight. Um, finally, everyone answered, except my And we get there, um, and my midwife checks me, and um, I'm not that far dilated, um, which is fine because my cervix isn't a crystal ball. Like, being dilated or not dilated or however far dilated you are, kind of, it doesn't really mean that much until you're getting towards the pushing stage. Um, so, you know, and I know my body, my body... It takes forever to get to four centimeters, but once it's at four centimeters, the rest is history. It goes super quick. So I'm like, okay. Um, she's like, just lay down and try to rest um, because, you know, you might have a while until it's go time. So I did that. And as the sun was rising, everything fizzled out. I was barely having a contraction every 10 to 20 minutes. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, I literally thought that I was going to have baby E by morning time and here I am like my contractions have stopped like what what is this nonsense so my doula slash photographer could clearly see that I was just so discouraged and she was like you know what let's go get breakfast let's go walk around let's do some curb walking and just relax I'm like okay whatever just so discouraged and um we went to go do that and the day just kept going like we ate the breakfast and my midwife was like you know what just you guys can stay here she didn't have any other client that was due for the birth center um, most of her clients were home birth um, clients but we were in an RV we tiny lived for a little bit um, and we didn't really have the space to do a home birth so I wanted it to be at the birth center so she's like just stay here you know relax like if things pick up great we can do some herbs we can do some walking we can do nipple stimulation we can do all the things to help get this baby to come um, we can do some balancing and belly shifting and just try to get him in the right position because clearly he was in a walk oh lunch came around and my contractions were still eh, nothing nothing really in active labor they were still super early labor and <laughs> I was just so frustrated and so we walked um, we went to a few parks to walk we went to Lowe's to walk because it was hot in the middle of August thankfully we were not in a place that gets super hot we were in Washington State um, and we did some balancing I was on the ball and tried to rest and literally everything you could think of to um, help this baby find the right position to help these contractions intensify and have him come out so
flash forward to evening and um, still no progression. So we're like, let's try some herbs and um, really focus on taking them and see what happens. So we did that and I took a little bit of castor oil, which don't recommend, um, mainly because it just kind of tore up my stomach. Um, I had a lot of diarrhea and just things that were not fun, but it did help in that situation. And so if you're being safe and you are um, advised by your midwife and you're under your midwife's care, she's right there to watch you and monitor baby and everything, then um, I would let you be the best judge for that. I wouldn't recommend it really like to just do at home by yourself without anyone monitoring you. So that's what I decided to do. Walked a little bit more and then the contractions came, which most of them in the beginning were um, just like poopy cramps. <laughs> um, and with a mixture of contractions, it was kind of hard to tell which was what. Um, so I emptied my body out and um, we're nearing dinner time, past a little past dinner time. And my midwife was like, you guys can rest. And I was like, I'm not laying on this bed again because I don't want them to fizzle out. So I just kind of like lied my head um, over the bed while I was sitting on the birthing stool um, just so I could make sure gravity was working um, with my baby to help him move down further. Um, and my husband passed out on the bed, um, which he deserved. He was so helpful. He was there every step of the way ever since the evening prior. Um, so he was just exhausted as well. Um, but my contractions picked up so intensely and they were back to back to back and like my midwife and my um, doula photographer were on the other side of the room they were trying to rest um, and so I was just here by myself which I enjoyed um, for a while <laughs> for a while um, my midwife had ordered some pho um, because I hadn't eaten really a big meal for a while so she ordered that for all of us and we were waiting for it to come so I went to the bathroom and my bloody show happened and just all of that. So I'm like, yes, like things are happening and they were intensifying. Like I was having back to back contractions like every two to three minutes um, or even one to two minutes. And I had tried to wake my husband up and he was not waking up, which I don't think anyone really expected me to switch that quickly um, because my midwife had checked me right before we started resting and I was only four centimeters but I knew that yes like I'm at the four centimeters mark it is a sprint now after that moment because that's just how my body works um, it's usually a few hours after that and baby's born so and everyone's always so shocked but I'm like I know my body like this is what happens this is what ha has happened the past two times and it's now three times so it's just what my body likes to do and so I'm in the bathroom I'm like calling for him getting angry and this is also how I knew that I was in true active labor because I was just mad I was so mad I'm like wake up I need you now I don't care if it's only been like 10 20 minutes and like whatever and that's kind of when everyone was like okay like things are happening um so we walked outside and it was so beautiful um it was like dark outside and cool there was a cool breeze and like no one around and so we were just able to walk around and like I could lean on my husband and sway and like have the counter pressure and it just was so amazing and we get inside and I'm like I want to get in the birth pool like I want to get in now and like mind you it had been a day basically since that pool had been warmed <laughs> and so they're trying to like add fresh water in and like warm it up and I'm like I want to get in now and so like I got in and I'm like nope 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 get me out it's lukewarm i can't stand it i don't like it get me out of here um and so they got me out and i was like okay i need water like i need any type of water so i got in the shower and that was amazing but that's also when i hit transition and 
Ooh, I thought I was gonna have the baby in the shower and we all did um so I'm in the shower and the water felt so good like on my pelvis area um like right like kind of at like the bikini line oh my gosh Oh my god. Felt so good with the warm water there. Um, my husband was in there just kind of supporting me up. And mind you, like this was a small shower. Like the shower wasn't really created to have your baby in. Like it's mainly for like to rinse off afterwards or to labor and like early labor, um, but really not really to have like a baby in. But I didn't want to move because the warm water felt absolutely amazing. And I remember just like holding on to the bar and like every time a contraction would come, I just kind of like squat down uh, with the contraction um, and then like come back up and then just like squat down. And it was blissful, like which is weird explaining labor like that, especially transition. But it just, I don't know. It was intense, but it wasn't super painful if that makes sense i don't know i might be weird but uh, my midwife comes in i had probably been in there i don't know probably an hour um birth mind is just like i don't really know what time it is your brain's just all over the place so she's like okay like i've delivered babies in the shower before i'm totally comfortable with it but my only concern is we're gonna run out of hot water and i'm like get me out like is the is the tub ready is it warm because i do not run around out of hot water like that's my worst fear like i'm right in the middle of pushing and now the water's cold or lukewarm that would be absolutely horrible so that's what shifted i'm like okay yep i need to get in the birth pool um and so i got in and um i couldn't find like the position I like so I'm just like moving around trying to like find the position during each contraction and like every time I moved another contraction would come um, I'm going to insert a clip right now Um, yeah, you can see that I was just like trying to find the best position. Um, finally, getting up on my knees um, was the best position for this labor. Um, I think just the gravity was really working because that's what was kind of working in the shower was being on my knees. So I tried that in the in the bathtub or in the birth pool, and that worked. And so. Um, it wasn't long like the birth assistant wasn't even there yet because things happen so quickly no one was ex expecting this to happen but i'm just sitting here like okay like i told you guys but it's okay um birth is weird and every birth can be different especially that third birth it's kind of like i don't know it could be like your first or it could be like your second or it could be completely different and that's kind of what mine was um leading up to it anyways the four to four centimeters and then a sprint has been the same um so like my poor photographer doula friend she was being the birth assistant doula and photographer and videographer all in one she's absolutely amazing um to be able to do that because like i was pushing baby was about to crown I found the position that I like and I reach down and I'm like feeling his head because he's crowning and it's just it's kind of squishy and I'm like hold on a minute like what is this like I don't really feel his hair um and he's still in his sack he's still in his amniotic sack and so he was born in call um which basically means um when they are in their amniotic sack your water doesn't break um his actually broke while he was coming out so he wasn't still in his little squishy little sack um 
but I was like, how cool is that? How amazing is that? Um, it's such a rare thing. Um, but I was just there and I was able a few more pushes later and I was able to just like grab him and bring him up to my chest and like I'm getting emotional a little bit because it's just so amazing like and so redemptive um to just be able to do that and like I remember sitting there holding him and just saying like thank you God like thank you Jesus like The past whole year of like his pregnancy, there was so much trauma. Like I lost my grandpa who was like a father figure to me and um, there was just a lot going on. And to have that labor, to be able to bring him up to my chest on my own was just so redemptive. Like, yes, the prodromal labor was so hard and if you are watching this right now and you are having prodromal labor like i'm so sorry like it is hard it's an emotional game but his labor his active labor the transition pushing him out bringing him to my chest was like it was so worth it and it was so redemptive and all i could do was thank god and um you know like it was worth it it made everything worth it and um <laughs> try not to cry on camera but yeah um so it was a smaller birth center and so me and my husband were just able to get out and, and cuddle on the bed and just soak in our precious new baby um who just is here and um we were able to take our time we didn't have to rush to leave and just really enjoy those moments together before we came home and became a family of five and like it's probably my favorite birth experience all in all together um yeah so that's his birth um he's about to turn one already in august which is just crazy um <laughs> i didn't even do my laundry um but <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching, for staying to the end. Um, if you are still here, please hit the subscribe button, hit like. Um, it helps me out so much. Um, I just want to share all the birth stories. Um, I'm going to be sharing my other two birth stories soon. I'm going to invite some of you guys and some of my friends to come and share their births as well. I'm going to share some of the videos that I've put together for some of my clients. And I'm just going to talk all things pregnancy, postpartum, and birth. So if that's for you, make sure you like and subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.